Hello? We're just going to continue with the program. You can continue eating and drinking. But I would like to introduce I'd like to introduce to you Brad Karp, who will be presenting our first honoree, Martin Flumenbaum. A 1984 graduate of Harvard Law School, Brad clerked for Judge Irving Kaufman of the Second Circuit. He then joined the law firm Paul Weiss, where he was mentored by such legal giants as Arthur Lyman and Simon Rifkin. From the very beginning, Brad worked on major and important cases, building a client roster that's a who's who of corporate America. His clients include just about all the major Wall Street banks and underwriters and the National Football League. In 2008, Brad moved from being the chair of the litigation department to become chair of the firm, a role he holds to this day. In addition to his role as the chair, Brad continues with a full plate of litigation. Brad is a mentor to young lawyers, and a main piece of advice he gives them is to always make sure that they give back to the community. This public mindedness is reflected in his own lengthy pro bono resume. He works with and acts as trustee or board members for such organizations as the Legal Action Center, Mount Sinai Hospital, and the American Friends of Hebrew University. The list goes on, and it's confirmed by Brad's own well-deserved pro bono awards and recognitions. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Brad Karp. Uh, thank you, Carmen. Thank you for your uh, overly lavish words. Uh, today is a wonderful occasion. Uh, before I get started, I want to congratulate Marcus, who is a wonderfully deserving honoree, uh, respected and esteemed voice and leader in our community, and a personal friend going back decades. As you've heard today, and undoubtedly, as you'll hear more from others, it is imperative, perhaps now more than at any point, in our history that we support the critical work done by New York lawyers for the public interest. NILPI is one of the cornerstones in our daily quest to make society more just, more fair, and more equitable. And no one appreciates the importance of NILPI's work more than Marty Flumenbaum, and no one appreciates Marty Flumenbaum more than I do. Marty has been a member of NILPI's board for 25 years. That's impressive in and of itself. But Marty's unwavering dedication to issues of social justice dates back nearly 50 years. All the way back to Marty's progressive muckraking days as the editor-in-chief of the Columbia College Daily Spectator, following in the footsteps of such notables as Bernie Nussbaum and Max Frankel and his work while in law school for the Harvard Defenders, where Marty, as a second and third year law student, tried two jury cases and 12 probable cause hearings. You see, doing good and working to make our world more just are nothing new for Marty. They've been a part of his DNA for half a century. And unlike so many who write checks and then move on, Marty is the quintessential participant he engages, he really, really engages. For those of you who know him, and I've known Marty since May 1983, when I was a Paul Weiss summer associate and Marty was a Paul Weiss superstar senior associate days away from making partner, Marty is someone who is allergic to the sidelines, which is why his leadership of a publication called The Spectator is kind of ironic. Marty is completely and utterly engaged in everything he does from trying multi-billion dollar cases, to handling critical pro bono matters, to managing our law firm. And Marty takes his engagement outside the halls of Paul Weiss. To take just one example, it's not enough for Marty to be a congregant in his synagogue, or for that matter, even a board member. The congregation and the rabbi insisted that Marty become president, a position he has held for more years than I could remember. And that's just Marty. And those of you on the NILPI board know exactly what I mean. Marty is at the epicenter 
of everything he touches. He participates, he cares, he sweats the details, he masterminds the strategy, he encourages, exhorts, and inspires, he teaches, and he mentors. Perhaps more than anyone at Paul Weiss, I have been the greatest beneficiary of Marty Flumenbaum's engagement, as well as his brilliance, his kindness, his dedication, and his loyalty. My experiences with Marty underscore why he is such a deserving honoree of the Law and Society Award. As I said, I first met Marty in 1983 when I was a sprightly 23-year-old and Marty was a grizzled 33-year-old on the cusp of partnership. Marty spent his associate years at the firm both before and after he served as a Southern District AUSA working for the giants of Paul Weiss, Judge Simon Rifkin, Arthur Lyman, Marty London, Jay Topkis, and Lou Kaplan, who's here with us today. I became friendly with Marty as a summer associate, and Marty gave me my first assignment when I joined the firm in 1985. Marty had just been asked by the New York Law Journal to write a monthly column on developments in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. I had just finished clerking on the Second Circuit, and Marty asked if I could assist him on the first column. That column was published in November 1985. To my great benefit, that assignment continued, and it continued, and it continued, and it continued, and Marty and I have produced columns for the New York Law Journal every month since November 1985. And for those of you keeping score at home, next Wednesday, the Law Journal will publish our 389th consecutive column, the longest streak in the 129-year history of the Law Journal. <clears throat> and all without the benefit of steroids. <laughs> As I climbed the associate ranks, Marty asked me to work with him on every type of matter imaginable. We worked on high stakes litigations, franchise threatening white collar investigations, and all sorts of pro bono matters seeking to remedy social injustice. I cannot begin to tell you how much Marty taught me about litigation, and more important for purposes of today, how much Marty taught me about the importance of giving back to society and how much fun I had working with Marty. It was under Marty's tutelage that I argued my first motion, took my first deposition, conducted my first direct examination, conducted my first cross-examination. It was under Marty's tutelage, unfortunately, that I conducted my first bail hearing. <laughs> Not everything turned out perfectly. <laughs> it was under, under Marty's tutelage that I navigated Paul Weiss's uh, political system and was able to win my first firm election. Everything that I have been blessed to achieve, I owe to Marty. And make no mistake, I learned a lot more from Marty than simply how to practice law at the highest possible level. Marty invited me and my family into his homes on the Upper West Side and on Long Beach Island. And he invited me into his extraordinarily rich and fulfilling life. I watched firsthand Marty's dedication to his community and to his, wonderfully, and to his wonderful family his beautiful and supremely talented wife, Ruth Hochberger, his wonderful kids, Martha, David, and Judy, and David wife, David's wife, Anna, and his unswerving dedication to his beloved New York Yankees. Marty is true to his Bronx roots. Marty has personally, and I do mean personally, guided the Yankees to 16 world championships <laughs> in his lifetime. Marty and I have celebrated so many mitzvahs together, bar and bat mitzvahs, weddings, the joys of grandfatherhood, and other celebratory milestones. And we've comforted each other in times of tragedy. Marty and I were trying a case together when he learned that his dad had died. Through it all, Marty has been my constant at the firm and in my life. He is unflappable, he is dedicated, he is loyal, he is generous, he gives back to others, and he gives back to our community. We need more Marty Flumenbaums, especially today. When I first met Marty, I had crazy, dark brown hair. Think Cosmo Kramer. And Marty had sandy brown hair. What remains of my hair is more white than brown, but you'll have a moment to take, in a moment, you'll be able to take a close look at Marty. Not a single white hair. You see, Marty's done something right. In fact, he's done pretty much everything right his entire life. And for that, we're the beneficiaries, and we're so grateful which is why it's my privilege to now present Marty Flumenbaum with the Law and Society Award 
from the New York Lawyers for the Public Interest. Wow. Uh, uh, Brad knows how much I love him, and I thank him for those extraordinarily gracious and kind words. Uh, I, it's, he, he, I'm in awe of Brad. Uh, more than 30 years ago, I had the good fortune of discovering this exceptionally talented associate fresh off his Second Circuit clerkship. And as he said, we have been working together and have been close friends ever since. As one of the partners who mentored Brad at Paul Weiss, we are so extremely proud of his leadership at Paul Weiss and especially his commitment to reinforce one of the core values at Paul Weiss, the importance of public service, and the absolute necessity of promoting and protecting the rights of neglected individuals and groups through a broad range of pro bono legal assistance. Before I say anything else, I want to say how honored I am to be sharing this award with Marcus. I met Marcus in 1988 when Marcus worked in the foreign attorney program at Paul Weiss and Marcus's lifelong commitment to social justice, diversity, and pro bono is an inspiration to us all. Congratulations, Marcus. I want to thank my friends and partners and colleagues from Paul Weiss, as well as our clients, some of whom are here today, for providing the platform, the support, and the culture, most importantly the culture, that encourages all of us at the firm to help others seek dignity, quality, and justice in their lives. Most importantly, I want to thank my extraordinary wife and best friend, whom I can say to this immense crowd I have loved since I was 18 years old, and my terrific three children, Martha, David, and Judy, and daughter-in-law, Anna, all of whom are here today, for keeping me grounded throughout my career and for inspiring me to take on some of the public service initiatives that I have. And they give me extra meaning each and every day in my life. Finally, I want to thank the New York Lawyers for the Public Interest for this wonderful, truly humbling special honor. The past recipients of this award include men and women whose careers made a significant difference to so many in this city and this country, many of whom, such as Bob Fisk, who is here today, and for whom I proudly served as an assistant United States attorney, inspired me personally throughout my career. I've had the privilege of being on the board of NILPI for 25 years, and I know firsthand how significant the work of the organization is. Its model for partnering with law firms and partnering with communities to confront the critical legal and social needs of New York's underrepresented communities is a model that really should be emulated throughout the country. I am very fortunate to have worked at Paul Weiss for my entire career in private practice, learning from and attempting to model my career after giants of the litigation bar, particularly Simon Rifkind, Arthur Lyman, Martin London, and Lewis Kaplan, who has honored me with his presence today. All of these legends understood the importance of what we now refer to as big law, being fully engaged in ensuring access to the courts and to social justice for those who could not afford 
big law legal services. No matter the climate, they all understood and exhibited an overwhelming optimism that as lawyers working through our courts, we could make a difference for others and create a better life for those in need. And it is that optimism that I urge all of you to recommit to here today. I know it's not easy. We have entered a period of remarkable challenge in our long battle for civil rights and social justice. There is disorder everywhere we look in the world. You pick up the newspapers, you go online, and all you read about is dysfunction in Washington, suppression of voting rights, fake news, travel bans, cutbacks in education, health insurance, and environmental protection. That list is long, and it can appear overwhelming. But I suggest to all of you here today that thanks to a courageous and independent judiciary, our legal institutions work, and that all of us together as lawyers have the power to move forward and provide critical assistance to others, and at the same time, actually enhance the meaning in our own lives. As my mentor Arthur Lyman wrote in his book entitled Lawyer, public service is not an act of duty or charity. It is one of the rewards of the profession, quote, as natural as breathing. It is what we do when we are at our best. The formation of Milpi and its extraordinary success is testament to what we can do collectively. NILPI was formed just 40 years ago in 1976 when our profession and our country confronted critical issues and I submit those were just as difficult, just as daunting and just as dangerous as those that confront us today. Remember this was the era of Watergate, the end of the Vietnam War, massive social change, and significant government cutbacks in social and important economic programs. Young lawyers in this city, such as myself in 1976, were grappling with the questions of unmet legal needs in the city. And law firms, too, were grappling with their obligations to fully live up to their pro bono responsibilities. Under the leadership of the city bar, NILPI was launched as an innovative public interest law organization that would tap into the expertise of the city's private bar, fusing it with the specialist skills of public interest lawyers, a unique partnership which furthers social justice in health, disability, and environmental rights. And the organization has thrived. NILPI started modestly with nine private law firm members, Today, NILPI has more than 72 member firms and corporate law departments that support its mission. Today, member firms donate thousands of hours of pro bono time through NILPI to over 600 nonprofit groups serving millions of people in this city, securing rights for the mentally ill, the disabled, and communities seeking environmentally sound and healthy neighborhoods and schools. Just three weeks ago, after the, right after the travel ban was announced, NILPI attorneys joined with hundreds of private attorneys, 50 of whom I'm proud to say were from Paul Weiss, to, to go and provide legal assistance at airports in New York and Washington and help oppose the draconian and illegal new immigration policies. Ultimately, as we all know, that travel ban has been enjoined by the courts. And that should be our model going forward for action for the future. There is still so much more that we will have to do. We need to harness our frustrations and renew our commitment to ensure quality health care and housing, safe jobs, equal schools, and healthy neighborhoods. We must deal with continued threats to immigrants and refugees. All of us in this room have the power to make a difference in other people's lives. I urge all of you 
to find that extra spark for service to others. There is no question that law is a business, but we must also never forget that law is a truly honorable profession where the rules that govern our conduct mandate that we provide pro bono support to the underprivileged. Service to others is an intrinsic part of our legal culture, and we must all recognize the special duty that all of us have in providing for the justice needs of the underprivileged and underrepresented. I applaud the work of NILPI. I am honored to have been part of that work for the last 25 years, and I thank NILPI for giving me this incredible, wonderful award. Thank you all very much. <laughs>